A Single Shard by Linda Sue Park Tree Year bowed low. As he bent down, his courage suddenly fled, leaving his knees as weak as grass. I must be hungry, he thought as he straightened his body, ashamed that he could think of such a thing at such a moment. You are here from Julpo, from Potter Min, the emissary stated. Yes, honorable sir. The emissary waited. Well, he said, where is the work? Treer swallowed hard. Sir, on my way here, I was attacked by robbers. They, they destroyed my master's work. The assistant stepped forward in anger. How dare you, fool! How dare you demand to meet the emissary with nothing to show him? He grabbed Treer's arm to pull him out the door. The weakness in Trier's knees spread through his whole body. The assistant was right. He had been a fool. First he was a failure. Now he was a fool. But the emissary had risen to his feet and gestured at his assistant, who stepped back. I am greatly disappointed, emissary Kim said. I have been looking forward to seeing Potter Min's work again. Trier hung his head. Humblest apologies to the honorable emissary, he mumbled. Slowly, he took the shard from his waist pouch. He drew in a deep breath and looked down at the shard before he spoke. It looked odd, wrapped in clay, but the inlay work was still delicate and clear, the glaze still fine and pure. Seeing it gave Trier a last pulse of courage. It is only a piece, honorable emissary, and yet I believe that it shows all of my master's skill. And with both hands, he held it out for the emissary. The emissary looked surprised but accepted the offering. He inspected it carefully. He took off the wrapping of clay and looked carefully at the edges of the shard. Then, emissary Kim sat down at his table again. He chose one of the scrolls in front of him, picked up his brush, and began writing. Trier stood with his head bowed to hide tears of shame. Obviously, the emissary had already moved on to other business, but it would be rude for Trier to leave before he had been dismissed. He wondered if he should take back the shard, which the emissary had placed carefully on the table. In his despair, Trier still felt grateful grateful that the emissary had not laughed in his face for the stupidity of traveling all that way with only a single shard to show. At his side, he heard the assistant gasp in surprise. The emissary had called the man and was showing him the scroll. Go, see that it is done, said the emissary. Master, the assistant hesitated. How is it that a commission can be awarded without seeing the work? The man's polite words could not hide the disapproval in his voice. I understand your skepticism, the emissary answered patiently. But I have seen this man's work, in Drupo and again here. He bent and picked up the shard from the table. Do you see this? Glow of jade and clarity of water. That is what is said about the finest Celadon glaze. It is said of very few pieces. He paused for a moment and held the shard up before him. It is true of this one, and the inlay work is remarkable. His voice faded for a moment as he gazed in obvious admiration at the shard. Then he handed the scroll to the assistant. Now, go and do as I ask you. The assistant bowed quickly and left. Emissary Kim looked at Trier. There was kindness in his eyes, like Crane Man's. I have written orders for him to secure your trip back to Julpo by sea, he said. You will go and deliver a message to your master for me. I am assigning him a commission. Tell me, have you worked for Potter Min long? Trier was stunned by the man's words, spoken in such a calm, ordinary voice. Through his disbelief and confusion, he heard himself answer, A year and a half, honorable sir. Good. Then perhaps you can tell me, 
For your master to do his best work, how many pieces per year might I expect from him? Concentrating on the answer to the emissary's question helped steady Trier. I think ten? Not fewer, but I don't think he can make many more. He looked up and spoke with quiet pride. My master works slowly. The emissary nodded slowly. He must. We need his best work. He bowed his head to Trier. If you have need of shelter here in Songdo, my assistant will see to it that you are housed and fed until the boat sails. Your coming is greatly appreciated. Trier wanted to laugh, to cry, to throw his arms around the emissary and dance wildly around the room. Instead, he bowed all the way to the ground. He could not speak, but prayed that the emissary understood his silent thanks. There were some things that could not be put into words.